I continue to march forward. Paul used the word that I press on toward the mark of the high calling of which God has called me heavenward unto. So there is a price of the high calling. And as long as you press toward that mark of the high calling, you are going to fulfill your assignment. You know, um, you can be successful in the wrong assignment. And that is equal to failure. So failure is also a success in the wrong assignment. That means, if God called you to be a musician, and you live and die as a trader, you are... You were successful as a trader, but to God you failed. Because you were not working in the assignment He gave your life. So I was focused, and I'm still focused, on fulfilling that assignment. So as long as I'm in the right path, success will come. So, I've not been so surprised about what I've seen so far, because the Bible speaks about it. And so one thing I would tell someone, starting, is that don't give up. Whenever you plant seed, it will take time. So continue to plant the seed, continue to water it. One day you will grow and see that it has come out, the fruits are on it, and you will harvest it. Patience is a virtue that all of us must emulate in this life. It of our everyday life, you might have started a business that you want to it to grow. It doesn't mean matter uh, the initial stage of it, but with patience you will see it if only you don't give up if only you don't give in and consistency is another key thank you sir continue doing the thing consistency brings results all right without consistency you will not get there the giant was once a baby there must be consistency in what you are doing you stay in focus you apply the laws of consistency you apply a lot of focus and concentration. You have to keep doing it. Doing what God says you should do. And you will get there. And achieve the very purpose for establishing that. Whether business or ministry like I'm doing. Or whatever. Whether school in whatever. With consistency, you will always achieve your dream. Wow. So with consistency, we will always achieve our dream. Okay, so my next question, this question is very broad, and I want you to elaborate more on it. It's about criticisms in ministry. I know there are lots of critics, people out there who don't even know anything about it. They will jump into conclusion, saying all sorts of things about men of God, their ministry, and others. How do you handle that? And have you been in that position before? Of course. Um, Joyce, criticism always comes in life. And woe unto you, Jesus said, if all men speak well about you, woe unto you. That means it's, don't be thinking it's all right if everybody is speaking well about you. So in criticism, you have to put it into perspective. Are the criticism constructive or just a criticism just to pull the person down, to pull you down? Uh, I listen to constructive criticism because, like they say, the one who is making the part does not know that sometimes um, the part, nichiatia, like in a local dialect. So um, you, you sometimes have to surround yourself with people who will give you constructive criticism. That is very positive. But there are those that are bad criticism. They want to see everything bad. In whatever you do. My advice is, one thing I do is I don't really listen to it so much. When I hear, I don't want to hear continuation. Because when you read Peter 7, verse 2021, 20, he said, If you are a person who wants to always listen to what people are saying, you will hear your servant cursing you. And you will have a problem. Alright? Uh, there is no one on earth that does Everything right and never sins. Ecclesiastes 7, 20 and 21. So, if you are always out there wanting to hear what, is about, what, what are the society saying about me, you are going to hear things that will put you down, discourage you. Alright? And sometimes, as a past, I've heard things that could be discouragement, disheartening, but I choose not to pay attention to it. 
And in life, if you want to move forward, you have to choose not to listen to every criticism. You have to choose not to pay attention to whatever everybody says. But if you have good people around you, if you have friends that are good, that are closer to you, sometimes you have to listen to their constructive criticism they are because they love you and they are not seeking to bring you down. They want to point corrections, mistakes to you and you have to listen and do it. So you don't have to be out there listening to opinions and, and you know, Jesus did not, whatever they say about Jesus was not a factor to him. They say it's a drunkard, they say it's a glutinous. He didn't pay attention to what they were saying. He was focused because in life, whatever you do, people will speak. If you do the right thing, they will speak. If you do bad, they will speak. Whatever you do, if you don't even do anything, they will still speak. That why are you not doing anything? So, no matter what, you have to put it in your mind that people are going to have something to say. So you have to know what you are doing. Is it right for God? If it's right for God, you have to keep focused. You have to keep doing it. Alright? If it's not right with God and you find out, you change, you stop, and you, you do the right thing. Alright? So you have to become your number one fan. Love what you do. And become your number one critic. Be able to listen to yourself. Uh, criticize. Uh, what you do. And you will see the best in life. Wow. I'm really learning myself personally. My last and final question. What is passion in ministry? Wow, I love that word passion. You know, uh, if you have purpose, you must have passion. Passion is the only thing that carry us on. You know, you must turn your passion to your purpose. All right. That means you must become passionate about those things you believe in. You know, when we look one, it told Theophilus, he said, these are the things most believed among us. 